Oh, that's a lot of poop. You've been laying here a while, haven't you, buddy? He's very angry today. Oh, don't mind if I do. Would anyone like some pepperoni? You can tell he loves it because of the way he is. We don't have any hatching, do we? His name is Big Ounce. What's up, all you sussy, imposter, amogus, Fortnite, RuneScape, James Chungus, uh, Club Penguin enthusiast? It's me, old Uncle Farmer Dad. Ben, today I'm gonna to show you guys the farm post terrible storm that killed all of my animals. Just kidding, none of the animals died because I'm a good farmer. Also, take a look at this. Here's a little bit of snow that we have left. A nice little snow, and little snowball there for you guys. This is a snowball for us Texans. Kevin, how's about you come over here and have a little bite of the snowball? <laughs> here, sir, have a bite. Have a bite of the snowball. Oh, there we go, very good. Here, have another one. Have another one. Oh, he ate it. He actually ate it. That's right, you guys. The storm is done. The ice has melted for the most part. There's still a little bit of snow here and there. I'm gonna grab another little chunk here for these boys. Ugh. I will also add that all of the chickens survived and we're gonna be rehoming a lot of these boys very soon. We got our three little duckerinos here, the little call ducks, and then the other ones back there sitting on her nest still. They're amazing mothers. Kevin, how's about you? Bite some of this. He's very angry. He's very angry today. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Oh, 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 very good. Very good. Such a strong, I like to scratch him behind the ears. He loves this. He loves this. You can tell he loves it because of the way he is. But yep, I'm keeping all these little adorable creatures in the paddock here. I'm closing this little area in so that they don't escape into the big area. I want to let all that grass grow as the ice melts. This grass is whatever. This is just rye that I planted. This stuff can all die. But everything survived. I'm gonna give you guys a quick little tour of what's going on in there. Check it out. Isn't this nice, everyone? It's a lot more open and clean. I'm gonna be moving all of these things into storage containers. We're gonna be getting two storage containers dropped off in a couple days. Very excited about that. That way things will be a lot less cluttered. Little Rwanda here sat on her eggs the entire time. She's an amazing mother. Let's actually check on those eggs. How are they doing? We don't have any hatching, do we? No, no, we don't. And honestly, a lot of these probably just aren't going to hatch. But that's okay because she's a good mother and we love her. I have another very big update for you guys. I put this little thing in here, this little gate. So now I can walk in and out and close it behind me. So now we can separate this area from this area. Like I said, all the chickens are doing very well. I went to a friend's place last night and got a bunch of pizza left over. And they said they were gonna throw this pizza all away if I didn't take it. And I said, what? No, my chickens will eat that. We got a lot of chickens now, and although we're rehoming them, it's important to give them all kinds of little snacks and stuff from your house. Now, it's not the best thing for chickens to eat just bread, but we don't waste anything here at the Urban Rescue Ranch, especially the nice sausage. That's good protein for them. They can eat all that. Come on, guys, have some of that pizza. Wow. As you can see, the chickens love pizza, just like you and me, you guys, just like us chickens and humans are not all that different. But yeah, guys, chickens will eat just about anything you give them. And especially if it's if it's meat or anything like that, you could take an entire cow and then skin it. And if you just tossed it in here, the chickens would turn it into bones in probably a few days. If you had enough chickens, probably not a few days. Would anyone like some pepperoni? I'll throw a little bit of pepperoni in there for you. But that's right, you guys, sorry. We don't waste anything here at the Urban Rescue Ranch. We don't waste anything at all. Even this stuff I'm gonna use as firewood. Okay, there we go. Whoa, what's this? That's right, you guys. Old Uncle Ben went ahead and made five 10 foot by 10 foot kennel spaces. Five, count them five. This was all the stuff that we had in Austin. We have one with a gate at the end there, one with a gate right here, one with a gate right there. I'm gonna cover this stuff up and then put a tarp over it. It's gonna look a lot nicer than that, trust me. And then I'm gonna put hay all along the bottom in here. It's gonna be real nice. This way, when people come over and drop off animals, we can put them somewhere temporarily that's safe and segregated just in case we need to quarantine them or anything like that. And this whole area is gonna be cleaned out and we're gonna have a little fire pit and hopefully we can get a little brick oven built here then we can make our own pizzas for these little guys but if you can't tell all the freezing rain and snow that we got has helped the grass tremendously now that it's all dried up this grass is really really irrigated and that's why i'm not going to let these guys trample around out here at least not for a bit this grass is going to be real real nice in about a week but yep arino we got these nice little kennels here this is what we're going to be putting some of the chickens in and this is what we have left i have 16 of these panels which is enough to make one more four by four uh big boy the beauty of having this open space in the back is that i can run a hose directly back here and then just have automated water set up into this area and bear in mind you guys i got most of this stuff for free at one point or other 
And if I didn't get it for free, I've had it for at least a year and a half. And that's really important, you guys. If you're gonna be starting a farm or an animal rescue or whatever, you really wanna make purchase decisions that are gonna be good long-term investments. Now, if we had made cute things out of wood and cedar, uh, it would be a lot more aesthetically pleasing than this, but let's say you need to get more space and move everything. You're not gonna take apart some nice big wood structure. These things were incredibly easy to take apart in Austin, bring over here and set right back up. I had a bunch of volunteers come out and we just did this in less than an afternoon. Also, these things are weatherproof and they basically doubled in value in the last year and a half. So we made money. And you can still decorate them and make them look cute like I did in Austin. Now it didn't look amazing, but it looked okay. And my motto has always been function over form. But after function is maximized, you maximize form. But with this little gap here, I can have a hose running from the spigot right here and then have connectors that stop at each of these little stations in the back and fill up water pools automatically. So in theory, all I have to do is just pull a switch over there and then every one of these kennels will have water. And some of these could be flight pens for pigeons. Some of these could be little just quarantine areas for whenever we get new ducks or whatever that we catch. Because if we go to the city and we catch more ducks that people have abandoned, we don't want to just toss them in with our other animals because what if they have diseases? And then we'll also be doing some other educational little breeding programs as well, where I'll teach you guys how to raise chickens and how to farm them on a small scale. I have some friends that have a little peacock farm and they want to send us some chicks. So we'll get to show you guys what it's like to have peacocks and raise them. And if you're wondering why I never had peacocks before, it's not necessarily because they're expensive, because you can get them for $17 a piece if you really want, if you're smart and you know how to look for them. But the real reason is in Austin, my neighbors would have hated me. They scream, they go, ha! Ah! Now we have all of this space and our neighbors don't care about any of this stuff over there. Those neighbors don't even live there, it's abandoned. And there's a lot of very loud businesses across the street. So if anyone complains to me about my peacocks, I'm just going to say, well, what about the 18 wheeler semis that drive in front of my house every night? What's weird though, is that there's no ice at all in here, but there's just tons of ice in here. Look at this, ew, poggers, you're so muddy, bro. Queen and Morgan have the most adorable little relationship. Queen will just be sitting down and Morgan will walk up to her and start nibbling on her face. Morgan definitely thinks that he is Queen's husband. And I don't know if Queen reciprocates that, but she definitely likes Morgan and just lets him do whatever to her. And look, Morgan tries to scare Poggers away from her. I think Morgan feels threatened by Pogger's love for Queen. Karen and Kyle have just kind of been walking around nibbling on some of the ryegrass that I planted here. The baby likes to just sit here on this concrete pad. Oh, that's a lot of poop. You've been laying here a while, haven't you, buddy? It's a nice big load of poop that you've made there. He's probably been laying here all morning. Look at Queen just kind of coming right through my legs. She's such a little precious little baby. Oh, hey, Kevin, are you gonna come over here and try to attack me? Queen, protect me. Queen, protect me. Protect me, queen. Queen, protect me. Protect me, queen. What's funny is it seems like every one of these creatures can fend off Kevin except for me now. The baby can grab Kevin and chase him away. Poggers can grab Kevin's face with his mouth. Queen can jump on top of Kevin and chase him away. And then Morgan will chase after Kevin too. And Kevin's terrified of Morgan. Kevin, Karen, and all these other guys are terrified of little Morgan. Morgan will also still get in random fights with Remington, our turkey. And that's why he's looking a little bit rough around the edges. He's also pre-molt, I think. I think he's gonna be molting pretty soon. Kevin, back up, bro. Back up. Get out of here. But that's it though, guys. Everything's slowly coming together here. We finally made those kennels and that's been a big step of progress for us. But look how there's still so much ice on this pool. That doesn't make any sense at all. Hey, Kevin, how are you today, sir? <laughs> look at this handsome little man. Look at this little man who likes to get scratched on the top of the head. Adorable little baby boy. Okay, goodbye, Kevin. What's up, foodies? Welcome back to another legit prairie dog food review. Today, we're gonna be giving Plappa, Big Ounce's wife. Yes, I named her Plappa. This is Big Ounce, he's my son. He's running around the house. Uh, we're gonna give her some broccoli. We're gonna give her some nice broccoli. I make sure they eat broccoli before they have their little nuggets of their actual feed. As you can see, Plappa here does not trust people and she does not like to be touched at all by me or anyone else, but she's slowly warming up to me and as I give her more and more food, I like to get closer and closer to her and slowly desensitize her to my presence. I'm doing this for a lot of reasons, but the main reason is that I want her to associate me, my face, and my hand being near her with happy food time. Know how even when I just inch a little bit closer, she starts to get a little scared, but she still loves her food, so she pops back out and eats a nugget that I give her. I gave her this little nugget. Look how she grabs it with a little hand. Aww, and as you can tell from her facial expression, I'm moving my hand a little bit closer to her to see if she'll allow me to pet her. 
Not today, Uncle Ben, but she's clearly very food driven. So as long as I keep doing this, she'll eventually warm up just like Big Ounce here. Who I must say is doing very well at socializing. He's only bitten a couple of my friends, but he never bites me because he likes the smell of my fingers. As you can see here, I give him lots of scratches. I like to scratch him behind the ears, the cheek, then I get under the chin. Sometimes I'll grab the lower jaw and wiggle it. Then I'll grab the other cheek, make sure I get the full sides. Then I'll get down, get the belly, I'll get the sides, I'll get his back. He likes it all. Obviously, this is the end goal for little Plappa and the little Tub. If we can get her to be like this, then that's going to be a big W. And honestly, guys, I had no idea what to expect with these two prairie dogs. I figured they would not have been socialized at all. And for the most part, Big Ounce took a little bit of getting used to. But he has warmed up so, so quickly. I definitely think that he just appreciates any kind of interactions and also the freedom to be able to run around the house. He likes to burrow in this sleeping bag. He likes to get way in there and then just kind of dig around. But I'm really thankful we found these guys at the right time. I'm thankful that this old man is very, very friendly. And I'm thankful that we have one that isn't very friendly so I can teach you guys how to tame them. It's definitely a privilege to be able to work with such an interesting and adorable creature. That's it though, guys. Thanks so much for watching my video. We have uh, some big videos coming up. We're going to be resting a lot more animals in the next few weeks so thank you so much for watching be sure to hit subscribe and leave a little like for uncle ben uh and uh oh almost forgot to tell you Bye.